What's up everybody, it's your boy here to give you guys a review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I know y'all probably like, where have you been? I will probably do a video about that later on this week. But let's go ahead and get into the fuck shit. So I assume the first half of this is just going to be back down memory lane for us. So we got uh, Candy talking about A's, the whole pie training thing. I did that with our, you know, tabloids, trade topics with T, that whole thing. And again, it's one of those where, hey, it's your kid, you do what the fuck it is that you do. Don't really care, but you know, the, there is that whole tie not really pulling his weight since she had to carry the baby. So I don't know, that might be the beginning of their storyline, but we do know that other shit has popped off. And please let's not forget that with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, the shit isn't chronological. So they might, like, they might have taped something maybe like last week, but for drama, they might sit here and add it, you know, to next week's show. You never fucking know. So. Remember that. Uh, got Kenya. She is uh, just about done with uh, More Matter and mentions that, you know, I think she has, I forget the timeline, but she doesn't have that much time. She has a um, housewarming party she wants people to come over for. And the guy's just like, well, um, I can't promise you that it's going to be done when you want it, but I'm going to put for my best effort. She also talks about her and Matt, about how uh, he went a little, you know, uh, loco and whatnot, and kicking in the uh, hotel room doors, finding numbers in the phone, and all this other shit. So we'll see how that all plays out, too. I don't know. He might be making another cameo. And we have Sheree. She is just about done with uh, Chateau Sheree. Uh... It's between four or five years that it's taken this long. And I will say from what we see, it looks beautiful. It, it looks fucking amazing. And, and my thing is, you know, she like there's a lot of shade being thrown, a lot, a lot of shade. I'm not going to sit here and talk about all of it. But she threw shade at uh, Kenya, you know, talking about some, you know, she's not going to sit here and rush through her place when they did show a flashback of pretty much the initial uh, I guess construction um, worker saying that it will take less than a year so you want to say and talk about microwavable fucking houses but okay I'm gonna let you have that because the place looks like it looks fucking amazing and you know I mean again you know I tip my head to her you know if I had my young on I would tip it but I tip my head to it because, I mean, she did all of that shit by herself. I mean, granted, she did a lot of talking, a lot of stun. And and also, you know, one thing to remember is when you are doing something for the very first time and you've never consulted with anybody, I think had she consulted with some people and actually had a good team, that Chateau Sheree probably would have been up by now. So, yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, y'all look, I'm laughing because the shade is fucking real. Like, I'm not really taking notes, notes, only because, like, I just don't fucking feel like it today. Uh, but, just, fucking kid, shit. Hopefully, she gives me all my damn life because, I mean, the shade is real. On a different note, so, we got our uh, fake truck and Horsha. And, yeah, I, I feel that I'm probably still going to keep them with their, uh, with these names, I'm just going to say it. Uh, pretty much, uh, Phaedra is talking about her divorce should, uh, pretty much almost be finalized. I heard through the grapevine, more or less, you know, with the vlogs and everything, blog, yeah, blogs and everything that, uh, you know, she's claiming that her divorce is final. But then other blogs saying that, nah, no, nah, you've been lying. So we don't know, but those who are talking about some being single together and going out and, you know, throwing ass in the circle and whatnot, which my whole thing is shit, do what the fuck you do. You know, it's one of those where it's just like, it, it living your shit at least. So I can't be too fucking mad. And uh, someone shows up uh, with a uh, broke down version of a... Uh, Cinderella's uh you know carriage and shit to um give a crown and an invitation to uh Phaedra and I'm looking at it, it's like I know this is not from who I think it is and it's actually from Kenya saying uh bring a plus one and make sure they're hot and not a thought they call it the shade just as I'm pretty sure we all did and then we have Cynthia who if y'all been watching, y'all know that I think that Cynthia is fucking gorgeous. Like, I, I, she's fucking stunning. And in her confessionals, even though, I mean, she could have fixed it up a little bit, but it was almost like she was giving Madonna Summers. And, you know, for those who know, like, 
of all the music from the disco era, I love, just in general, I love me some damn Donna, but you know, another story for another day. But uh, talking about the whole uh, divorce thing, wanted to file for a divorce, and uh, the question came up, was it infidelity? Was it, uh, I guess, being estranged or the whole separation? She said, no, it's just, um, you know, something that I wanted. And the um, <clears throat> attorney was like, you know, what I suggest to you is, well, he asked about a prenup. There is a prenuptial agreement that we don't know what's all in the, you know, nuptial agreement. But uh, he's pretty much suggested that both she and Peter sit down together and they talk things out and try to iron as much shit out beforehand. Because the more that they have ironed out, the easier and the faster the process will be. If not, then it's going to be a whole lot of fighting out in court. And she does say that she wants the house. So, we going to see. We going to get there when it comes back. But peeing on that fuck shit. Like, I can't. I can't. But, anyway. So, I'm going to be nice and address her by her real name, Portia. Reason being is, like I said, I mean. Uh, the scene with her at uh, therapy slash anger management. Somewhat touched a nerve ever so slightly again. This kind of in part has a reason to do with why I've been away. Uh, partly, and I would say part because I don't feel that she went all the way there. Like I think she was holding back because the camera was there. Like the cameras were there because she needs a storyline, no shade. But she's not going to go all the way there because I mean the reality is you don't like it's hard for anyone to be that vulnerable. And you never want, and for some, you never want to be that vulnerable and give somebody some ammunition to use against you later because you already know everyone is watching this back, compiling notes for the reunion. So I think we all know that, right? And you know she talks about uh, be uh, growing up. Well, actually talks about dealing with the women, the different triggers. The uh, counselor goes and asks her, okay, you know, pretty much the whole uh, parallels because. What a lot of people fail to realize is things that happen in our childhood or even our past sometimes dictate how we deal with things in our present. Trust me when I say I know this fucking wholeheartedly. And it, you know, she was like, I was, you know, bully, you know, and it was one of those where she had to grow into her features, you know, got, and it was, you know, she was depressed and even contemplated suicide. You know, she began to cry, but you can see that she was holding back and sometimes holding back will keep you from a complete breakthrough but again cameras are there not trying to be vulnerable that whole thing so yeah and we have uh charade at home kenya calls to invite her kenya i'm telling you this shit is too much she pretty much says that i would have sent her a horse and carriage but i don't know where she lives she could I'm just like, Lord help me, Lord help me. But I need that Kiki. I really do need that Kiki. So, you know, there's that. I mean, it's pretty much it for that. For now. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So we have uh, Patricia. I gotta give him the name back. Um, so Cynthia calls him because uh, she's looking for the prenuptial agreement and can't find it. Um... I have a problem with that. Something as important as that, boo boo, you should have had that shit scan, put in your like email that shit to yourself in a PDF file, had that shit on motherfucking thumb drive, like I mean, or if you have <clears throat> like a safe whatever have that that should sh okay, that's what shit you have multiple motherfucking copies of, okay. But anyway, she calls uh Patricia asking him and he's like, why you call me when I'm with my girlfriend? She's like, are you having a bad day, huh? He was like, my girlfriend, my business. And it's one of those where it's just like, he knew just in saying that it would make her feel some kind of way. Now that right there, that, that, was, that was some bitch ass niche right there. That was some bitch shit right there. But then she's like, well, I'm trying to find a prenup. Uh, do you know what a prenup is? He was like, well, why don't you ask your mom what a prenup is? Since she had the, the marriage certificate. Now, here's the thing. Was he wrong for that? Yes. But was that shit shady? Yes. Did I get my everlasting fucking life from that? Yes, only because I could see myself doing some shit like that and saying some shit like that. Like, oh, like again, the whole opening up, like you know, trying to you know get up with the one two punch. No, I wouldn't did no shit like that. And actually, what I will say is, though I would say and do some shit like that, because I have been known to you know fly all the way left. It is what it is. 
it's one of those where I don't think it was necessarily provoked, especially when he said he hadn't talked to her or seen, well, he said seen her, but I'm under the impression they hadn't talked for weeks. Now, it'd be one thing if, you know, shit was, you know, they was going back and forth, but he just decided to hit her with the, you know, two piece in the biscuit, but I digress. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that, but I know everybody like Pete on that bitch shit, so there's that. Uh, Cynthia walks into uh, Kenya's place and sees that it's not finished, and we're not ready uh, to welcome in people and whatnot, and is uh, going to help her. And she, I'll save the next part because we're actually going to see all this play out. Be right back. <clears throat> okay, so I mean, it pretty much ends with everybody being there for the most part. Uh, we're missing a few people, but for the most part, everybody's there. And uh, <clears throat> Porsche shows up uninvited. We'll see that next week. The house is very, like is a needs a lot of damn work. I'm being nice right now. Cause I, I think I need to save my energy for this married to medicine bullshit that's actually airing right now as I'm talking to y'all. So yeah, Kenya needs a hell of a lot more work, and I think I might have a little bit more to give. But I think this is good as you know, first day back on you know the YT for a good while. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys for the married to medicine I review. Peace.